Hello, my name is Furkan Yeşiler and I'm going to talk about our research paper investigating the efficacy of version retrieval systems on setlist identification. This is a joint work with Emilio Molina from BMAT, Joan Serra from Dolby and Emilia Gomez from EC Joint Research Center. First of all, we define setlist identification as the task of retrieving the metadata and the timestamps of all the tracks played in live music events, like concerts. What we want to do is to build a system that can process a long audio query and that can give us the names of all the tracks present in that audio query with their respective timestamps. And what can we do with such systems? First of all, in streaming platforms, you may have seen some comments like the one on the slide, where a user identifies all the tracks in a concert with their start and end timestamps, and such comments can enhance the viewing or listening experience for some other users. But as you may guess, this is a very labor-intensive work, and automating this process would help both the users and the platforms. Another area of application where such systems can be used is copyright management. When monitoring radio or TV broadcasts or live music events, such systems can be used to identify the tracks played in such media and that information can be forwarded to related parties for copyright management purposes. So what are the challenges for this task? First of all, when you want to identify some tracks, you usually do that by comparing them with a set of songs in a reference corpus. But in many cases, this reference corpus contains the studio recordings of such tracks. But there can be huge differences between the live recordings and the studio recordings of the same track. There can be changes in uh, pitch transpositions, tempo, key, and so on. So there, therefore, the more, more popular solution, which is the audio fingerprinting, is likely to fail in such conditions. Another challenge is that uh, in live music events, there are many non-musical sections. And since we just have a long audio query without telling us where these segments, where the songs start and end, uh, we have to find a way to handle these non-musical sections as well. As previous work, we could only find one research paper that is from Izmir 2014. And this paper divides this task into two subtasks. The first one aims at only identifying the tracks in the correct order, while the second one aims to uh, identify the correct timestamps of those tracks. For the first subtask, the authors assume that the artist is known. Therefore, the, the reference corpus that is used for comparisons contains only the recordings of that particular artist. But this is likely to fail in cases where an artist uh, plays the songs of another artist, for example. For the second subtask, they assume that the set list uh, identified from the first subtask is uh, completely correct, and they just uh, try to uh, identify the timestamps. But this is not a very practical approach, uh, because the system that is used in the first subtask is likely to give some errors. Therefore, the system proposed in this uh, paper is uh, far from practical use, in our opinion. We also saw that uh, there is a Marex setlist identification context since 2015, but the links uh, to the submissions are broken, therefore we couldn't reach uh, those systems and we couldn't include them in our work. In this work, we propose an end-to-end -end workflow that can take a long audio query and output a final report that includes the identified tracks and their timestamps. We process these long queries with overlapping sliding windows using a version identification system, and after we obtain these matches, we perform a match consolidation and revision step to filter out the redundant matches and also the false positives. First of all, the version identification step. As I mentioned earlier, we process the long audio queries using overlapping sliding windows, and we compare the content of each of these windows with the tracks in our reference corpus using a version identification dataset. At the end of this process, we identify each of these windows as one track or another from our uh, reference corpus. 
For this, we first extract a type of a chroma feature uh, from both the windows and reference tracks that we call crema PCP. It is an intermediate output of a chord estimation model, and in previous works, we saw that it uh, achieves improved performance against uh, HPCP. And for the version identification part, we compare uh, three systems. First is Remove. It is a deep learning based system and a successor of Move, which was presented at ICASP last year. And it is an embedding based uh, system, which means that the tracks and the windows are encoded into embedding vectors and the similarity estimation is done with uh, computing Euclidean or cosine distance between these embeddings. The second system is QMAX. Uh, it is a rule-based system and it has been state-of-the-art since uh, 2009 until very recently. And uh, for similarity estimation, it uses a local alignment-based approach. The third system, what we call 2D FTM, is a hybrid system that contains some rule-based and also data-driven uh, parts. And it was one of the first scalable solutions for version identification and it is also an embedding-based solution. Apart from comparing version identification systems, we also compare different window and hop sizes. For window sizes, we consider 2 minutes, 3 minutes and 4 minutes. And for hop sizes, we consider 15 seconds, 30 seconds and 60 seconds. After we identify the content in each of these windows, we perform a match consolidation and revision step to mainly filter out the redundant and the false positive matches. This process contains four steps. The first step is to merge consecutive matches that are identified as the same track. And while we do that, the distance of the merged match is taken as the lowest distance of the matches that are being merged. As you can see, uh, the first two tracks are identified as the same track and the first one has the distance of uh, 0 0.1 while the second one has the distance 0 0.4 and when we merge these two matches we take the distance 0 0.1 as the distance of the merged match. The second step is to handle the overlapping segments. For this we cut the overlapping parts of each of the matches and we compare the distances of only the overlapped matches and we take the, uh, the match with the lowest distance as the uh, correct uh, match for that particular overlapped part. As you can see here, uh, the first match and the second match has some overlapped parts and we just isolate that part and we look at their distances as the distance of the first match is lower than the distance of the second match, we identify this first, this overlapped segment as the uh, track from the first match. The third step is to again merge the consecutive matches that are identified as the same uh, track. Uh, this is a trivial step, but uh, it's required uh, since we had, uh, we split some uh, overlapped parts in the previous step, and so we need to merge them back again. And the final step is to identify these uh, matches as true or false matches using a classifier. In our work, we used a support vector machine classifier and we gave the match durations and the match distances as the features, as the inputs uh, to this classifier uh, to identify whether these matches are uh, correct or false. For example, if a match is very short and if it has a very uh, high distance, then it is likely to be a true reference. So then this step actually uh, can prune uh, these kind of redundant or false positive matches. To develop and evaluate our system, we collected and annotated a new dataset that we call ASSET, Automatic Setlist Identification Dataset. It includes 75 concerts that last about 100 hours and 1.3 thousand reference songs that last about 90 hours. We further split this dataset into two parts the development subsets includes 10 concerts and their uh, respective reference songs, and the evaluation subset includes 65 concerts and their respective reference songs. Also, to study the system performance under different conditions, we annotated these concerts by their audio quality and musical styles or genres. 
For the audio quality, we consider three categories. AQA contains concerts that are from uh, big venues like uh, stadiums or very large concert halls. Also, they are professionally recorded. AQB contains also concerts that are professionally recorded, but from smaller ve venues. And we also observe that the mixing mastering quality of the concerts from AQB are a bit inferior uh, of the ones from AQA. And lastly, AQC contains concerts that are recorded uh, with uh, smartphones or cameras. And for the genres or styles, we consider five categories, the pop commercial, rock metal, indie alternative, hip hop rap, and electronic. We use four metrics to evaluate our systems. The first two are uh, true positives and false positives, which are pretty trivial. But the next two are uh, first detected annotations percentage. It is the ratio of the correctly identified annotations over all the annotations in the ground truth. And the last one, detected length percentage. It is the ratio of the correctly identified duration over the entire duration of the concerts. And now the results. Here, I will only give a quick summary of the results, but you can check our paper for the details. First of all, we saw that the classifier is pretty useful. It can reduce the number of false positives by 80%, while reducing the number of true positives by only 15 to 20%. Therefore, for having a clean final report, it can be pretty valuable. We also saw that the, the audio quality is not the most important factor on system performance. The systems perform more or less the same uh, with different audio qualities. And we think that uh, the Crema PCP is fairly robust to noise and the audio quality. And uh, another thing is the musical genres and styles. We saw large variations between the performance on different concerts uh, from different genres or styles. And we again think this is due to our input representation. Since we only use a chroma-based representation, it can be difficult to process the information from certain genres in, a, in an efficient way. Also, since we use a sliding window approach, uh, having precise timestamps can be pretty difficult. Therefore, for future work, uh, we think that better post-processing steps must be investigated to obtain a better resolution timestamps. Also, uh, we saw that the size of the reference corpus matters a lot. For this, we increased the size of our re reference corpus from 1,000 songs to 55,000 songs, and we saw a drastic uh, reduction in the uh, system performance. Therefore, the uh, results reported on very small data sets may not be uh, pretty valuable for uh, real-world performances. And lastly, uh, we saw that the embedding-based systems are drastically more scalable than local alignment-based systems. For example, to complete all the, uh, all the computations for our evaluation sets, remove and to the FTM took only 11 minutes without any uh, GPU acceleration, while QMAX took about 20 days. And lastly, uh, here are some useful links. We share the uh, code for both evaluation and the experiments on our GitHub repository. And you can also find uh, instructions on how to download assets uh, in the same repository. You can also find uh, the pre-trained remove models on the link and uh, the QMAX and 2D FDM algorithms also on the given links. If you have any questions, you can contact me through email. Thank you.